Hello and welcome back to the Toronto website developer.com. I am P. Orski, the Toronto website developer. And in this video tutorial series, I want to walk you through the bootstrap um, design framework. So uh, if you're like me uh, and you consider yourself a backend web developer, you might not be as great with HTML and CSS and JavaScript as other front end developers, uh, but that shouldn't stop you. And so for me, I wanted to dive in and learn bootstrap so I can improve my front end skills, especially working on something like dailylearns.com where I'll be designing the website. Um, and so as a result, figured I might as well jump in and get my hands dirty with Bootstrap. I've always played with it, but uh, always been through tutorials and never really had a full grasp of understanding what the framework adds. And so I thought I'll learn about it and I'll help others do the same. So if you're a web developer and you're looking to improve those web design skills, this tutorial series is going to be for you. Before we do that, you'll notice I'm over at leanpub.com slash white dash hat dash hacking. This is a book that I'm writing about uh, web security, essentially. Uh, for white hat hackers and so really it's drawing on publicly disclosed vulnerabilities for websites like Twitter, HackerOne, uh, Shopify, Coinbase uh, and showing you how uh, these vulnerabilities occurred um, and it's all because public uh, rather these companies have publicly disclosed the information and so um, again I want to show this uh, to you as a viewer so that it helps your web security um, but also give you the opportunity to go make some money and work with these companies on HackerOne.com where you can uh, do some white hat hacking and get paid for it with bounties. So again, leanpub.com slash white hat hacking. Now, with all that said, um, with regards to the tutorial, you notice I'm at localhost slash bootstrap. This is the site that we're going to be working on, where we're going to be working through the framework and figuring things out. Um, I've got a simple web page here that just has an H1 tag. Hello world, thanks for watching my tutorials. So nothing, no styling, no nothing here. And so we're going to go ahead and add Bootstrap, set it all up. So if you're already familiar with that, you can skip on to the next tutorial. But if you're not, you'll want to follow along and get Bootstrap added to your index.html page. So first thing we need to do is go to getbootstrap.com. Here you can download the framework. When you do that, you're going to get a zip folder. Um, here you can see download. You get a zip folder, and that zip folder is going to contain three um, folders itself. And so it's going to be CSS, fonts, and JavaScript. You're going to put those into your uh, web directory. So for me, I'll get out of here. You'll see that I'm working on a WAMP machine. I'm on Windows, and so in www, I've created Bootstrap. That's where my uh, files live. And so I've gone ahead and I've added the CSS fonts and JavaScript folders there that come with that archive. So you're going to do the exact same thing. Now, after you do that, we're going to go into our index.html page. And so this could be whatever framework you're working with. I just happen to be creating a plain HTML page, but if you're working with Drupal or you're working with Rails or something else, uh, there's going to be different steps to follow, but essentially you'll be adding Rails into, or rather Bootstrap into your site. So for our sake here, what I have to do is I have to add a link to a style sheet. And so style sheet type is equal to text slash CSS. And my href is actually css slash bootstrap.css. And so here, uh, if you're astute and you've gone ahead and checked out the directory that we just downloaded, you'll see in the CSS, you get a whole bunch of different bootstrap uh, files. And so we're using bootstrap CSS. When you're in production, you want to use bootstrap.min.css. And the reason for that is because it's minified and it takes out all the comments, extra spaces, and reduces the file size of the CSS folder. So with that, uh, I think we went ahead and saved that. You'll see if we go back to this page and we reload our index.html page, we're going to get an immediate change. And you see we've gone and we've got different text. And so now we are pulling in uh, the bootstrap CSS file. Next thing we need to do is head over to jQuery.com and we're going to get the jQuery JavaScript file. Um, now here we have a choice between 1.x and 2.x. The difference being 2.x does not support IE 6, 7, or 8. So if you're going to support 6, 7, or 8, you want to go ahead and grab jQuery 1. That's what I've done. I've also grabbed the uncompressed development version uh, because I'm going to be in the development site. Obviously, when you go to production, you want to grab the production version. Uh, and it's very similar to what we just talked about with Bootstrap CSS. It's going to remove all the spaces, all the comments, and everything. Just kind of clobber it all together, but make it a smaller file. So go ahead and grab that. It's just going to be a JavaScript file. And when you download that, you're going to put that into your JS folder. So you'll see here, when I go in, I've got jQuery.-1.11.3.js uh, because jQuery is written in JavaScript. And so that's going to provide us some cool, handy uh, JavaScript without us having to know a whole lot about JavaScript itself. Um, playing with Windows, I probably shouldn't. So 
With all that said, we now have localhost slash bootstrap. We have to add our JavaScript files into our uh, index.html. And so we're going to do that in the body. Um, and then rather than make you watch me type this, I'm just going to go ahead and grab these two tags. And here, they should actually be added down at the bottom of the body. And the reason why you want to do that is because it will increase your, your page load times. All the HTML will be rendered, and then it'll bring in these, these script files. And so that's why it goes in the bottom of the body. And so we'll just add a space there so that we know it's there. Next thing we're going to do to set up our site is we're going to add a couple of meta tags. And so I might as well just grab them so you don't have to watch me type them all out. And I'll explain what we're doing with them. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to tell browsers that we're using UTF-8. And so that's why we have a meta tag char set is equal to UTF-8. Next thing we're going to need to do is tell the browsers to avoid using IE compatibility mode. We want to force IE to use the latest rendering engine. And you do that with this tag here, HTTP-equiv. Uh, and I don't have to read it all out. You can grab it. Just pause the video and grab the text. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at uh, this meta tag viewport. And so what we're doing here is we're saying use the entire screen of whatever device we're on. Whatever browser we're on, use the entire screen. And so that's where this initial scale is equal to 1. That's really 100%. Uh, and that's what that means. Now, last thing that we need to do is go ahead and we need to support um, anything less than IE9 um, using HTML5 and CSS3. So Bootstrap uses uh, HTML5 and CSS3. Uh, pretty extensively and IE8 doesn't support all that it uses and so in order to make that happen we need to get some JavaScript files um, and load them so we're going to go ahead and I'm going to show you the text that we're grabbing you'll see here it's just an if statement and we're saying if we're less than IE9 go ahead and load these two scripts and it happens in the head because it's a conditional and so we're actually grabbing two files from oss.maxcdn.com we should probably, if you were in production, go ahead, grab these JavaScript files and save them onto our site and have them locally. Um, but for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm not going to do that. Um, and so all of that said, I'm going to save this. And now I'm going to go back to my site, reload my page, and I'm going to open up my developer tools. And so what is it? Control Shift I. And here, after pressing Control Shift I, we can check out in the console. I have a problem here. I failed to load a resource. The server stir, uh, returned to 404 when I was looking for my jQuery.js. Okay, so that's bad. Uh, and then it tells me Bootstrap, Bootstrap's JavaScript requires jQuery. So let's figure out what's going on here. Looking for a jQuery.js. And so let's see what I actually have. I have jQuery. Okay, let's rename this. Get out of here. Um, I should have nerd tree installed, but I don't. Uh, so that's why I had to get out. Uh, so let's go ahead and move jQuery to jQuery.js. Okay. Now if we come back here and we reload our page, you can see our JavaScript is loading fine. That's great. We don't have any errors. And if we go to the network, we can see that uh, we've gotten our CSS file, no errors. That's great. So that is the extent of this video tutorial. We got Bootstrap set up. All you had to do was go head over to get Bootstrap grab the zip file, grab the CSS, JavaScript, and what's the other one? I can't even think, images or something like that. Um, oh, that was terrible. Fonts. You're going to grab those three folders. You're going to put them into your web root. Then in your index.html, you're going to go ahead and you're going to do three things. You're going to add your style sheets. So remember, uh, you're going to go in the body unless you're doing the conditional. You're going to add your CSS, and then you're going to add your meta tags. In the next video tutorial, we're going to go ahead and actually create a responsive grid design uh, using Bootstrap where we'll actually be adding content. So that'll be a little bit uh, more engaging rather than this dry tutorial. Thanks very much for watching. And again, if this helped you, please leave a thumbs up, comment. Uh, let me know how it's going, and hopefully we'll see you for the next tutorial. Thanks very much for watching.